Hello programmers! I want to talk about Unity projects that use a text file. It could be a .txt or a .json or a .csv. Um, I have a text file. I put it in the assets folder under a resources group and it's a text file with states and capitals. And I, I didn't type all of them, but I have a sampling of abbreviations and state names. And I want to be able to use this text file from within inside this scene where I'm going to have the user type in the state abbreviation. So that is the input field inside of my canvas. I went ahead and made the, uh, the placeholder say enter state abbreviation with a nice big font size. And then I made sure that the text also had a bigger font size. Then I've got a button that says submit and Whenever the user submits, I'm hoping that my text file can be read in by the program, read in by a script, and I'll update the state details to say what the name of the state is based on the abbreviation. So I need a script that is going to be able to read this list of states and capitals. So I'm going to put that under my game manager object. So if I click on my game manager object, that was just an empty um, object that I created and named game manager and now I'm going to add a component that's a new script so I'll go ahead and type in new script all right so I'll do the new script and let me call this maybe file input states or something because this is input related to states and capitals if it doesn't automatically open you can double click right there the name of the script and I'm going to start with the the top of the file first we'll do some serialize fields for the user input that they're going to type in right there the when they're typing in that input field the text part of that is something i want to capture to be able to see what they typed in i'm going to call that user input and it's trying to auto correct for me i don't want text align i just want text and to be able to get text i need to do using unity engine ui all right, so that's the first thing. Um, another one, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this, will be the output that I wanna display. I'm gonna call it details, which is really just the name of the state. That's gonna be this part in yellow. And then what else is I need to read in the input from a file. That file, we could think of that as a text asset data type. And I'm gonna call that file. All right, so when we start the program, we're gonna see if we can go ahead and open up that file and take a look at what's inside. So to do that, I'm gonna assume that the user did drag in uh, that file so we have something to look at, and we can go ahead and just for debugging, we could say, well, let's do file text and just, just see if we can see something. So I'll go ahead and hit save all, and I'll go over to my scene and I need to hook things up so that there's three none sections that I need to fill things in. The first one I'm going to drag over is that yellow text for the details about the, the state name. The next is the user input. I'm going to drag that over. And then finally, the file, I've got it under resources, and that's my states and capitals file. And I'll go ahead and hit run now. And it doesn't matter what I type in as the state abbreviation, but in the background, the debugging statement, notice it started to, um, was able to print some of the states and capitals. Um, it just printed a little bit. We're going to go ahead and keep reading in everything in that file. So instead of just printing, that was just for debugging, we can get rid of that. We want to keep reading. Um, and my file is comma delimited, so I'm going to try to split things every time I see a comma. Um, there's quite a lot of typing, so I'm going to pause the video and get some of this typing done. All right, I need one more variable before I can store everything from the file, and I'm going to choose the data type dictionary. If you've never used a dictionary, they are really cool data types. So just like if you were doing a Spanish to English dictionary or a French to English dictionary, you could look up um, one of the words and find the other word. Like you could look, have the English word 
look it up and then find the Spanish word or the French word. Um, so I'm going to make a dictionary that has the abbreviations as the key that you'll use to look up the name of the state. So they're both strings, the abbreviation and the name of the state. And in the start of my program, I'm going to go ahead and say that state's dictionary is starting out as empty. So the string for the key, the string for the value, we start out with an empty dictionary. Um, every time through, oh, I forgot the word new. Every time we go through a different line of the file, we'll add to this dictionary. So there was enough code to read from that file that I put it in its own function. And let me explain everything in the function. So when you look at my file under resources, the states and capitals, I've got the comma delimited um, data one line per state. When you're talking about file input, it depends on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. Um, the last character of every line could be just a new new line character if you're on linux or a mac or if you're on a pc there's something called a carriage return followed by the new line character so i'm going to handle any of those um, these any of these three would mean i'm at the end of a line so these are kind of invisible characters that appear right around here and here and here at the end of each of these lines so the first thing i want to do is split that file by the new line character and the second thing i'm going to do is split them on the commas so there is a built-in split function if you're using the the text from your file so i can say go ahead and split on any of those new line characters and there's you can either remove any empty lines or keep them depending on what you, you want to do with the data so that's that second argument and after this line my variable lines has every line from the file so if it was a three line file, then the length would be three. If I had all 50 states, my length would be 50. I will go through this for loop one line at a time. And just for debugging, I'll print out what that line was. And then I will further split the line on commas. And um, this time I didn't want to remove empty entries. I shouldn't have any empty ones, um, but we'll go ahead and split those up by the abbreviation for the state, the state name, and then at some point I was thinking of doing capitals too, but my file right now doesn't have a third portion, so we'll just delete that. So I will end up adding to my state and capital dictionary um, a new entry with the abbreviation and the state. I wonder why it's complaining about that. Um, oh, I because my name and my variable was states plural, so I need to make that states plural. All right, let me go ahead and save this file and we'll run it and nothing is going to happen on the screen yet. I'm saving that that scene um, update for the last thing. Right now, I'm just going to look in the console and look for the debugging information about opening that file. And yep, there's a lot that we're writing to the file. So we open up the file, we read in the first line, which is AL and Alabama. And then we read in the next line and the next line. So we are reading all the way through the file. And so presumably we're putting that information in a dictionary and we can start to use that next. All right, so back to the script. I'm gonna add a new function to help me update the display. So when we start the scene, we populate that dictionary, and now we wanna update the display. I'm gonna make this a public function so I can hook it into that button. So update display, and if, I'm gonna, I could do some error checking and see if that, dictionary is null but let's assume that the dictionary is not null and i'm going to get what the user input as the abbreviation they want to look up so the user input text let me see if my variable names are right yeah user input text and then i also want to look in that dictionary that state's dictionary to see if it contains the key and then the key is the state abbreviation all right, so if it does contain that, I can go ahead and update that yellow text, the details section, to have, so from my state's dictionary, I want to have 
whatever the name of the state is. So to look something up in the dictionary, you just pass um, the key in square brackets, and that'll, if I pass in AK, then it'll update the details to say Alaska. Otherwise, some error handling, if they type something that's not a valid state abbreviation, I'm gonna just say state not found. All right, let's go ahead and save all and hook up that button. So right now, if I click on button, there isn't anything hooked up there. I'm gonna make sure that if you don't already see this box, you can hit the plus sign. And then my script is on the game manager. So I'll drag that into here and pick update display. That was the function I was just working on. So fingers crossed, I'll go ahead and hit play and we can type in our state abbreviation. I'm going to start with um, AZ and then go ahead and submit and woohoo, it updated using that dictionary to say Arizona. Let's try another one, FL, submit, Florida. If they type in a bunch of gibberish, state not found. So that is an example of using a data type dictionary with key value pairs and reading in your input from a file. So I've got my file under the resources section and it's a comma delimited input file. All right, that was a lot. So I'm gonna stop the video here. Happy programming.